Ranajoy Sarkar says this doctor business is being hampered go fit tuber like <laughs> no bro Hey there lovely person watching YouTube if you're new here hi my name is Ajay I'm a doctor from Bangalore India If you're already subscribed, welcome back. I love you to the stars and back. YouTube has been a rewarding journey for me. I've learned a lot of things, I've met a lot of people, I've got a lot of cool people, you know, appreciating my work. In short, I'm proud of the channel. My highest viewed video is the one where I discuss and break down the, you know, misinformation given in one of Fitubers videos where he talks about, you know, signs of disease on the tongue and things like that. It has 77,000 views, which is amazing. it has 1.8000 likes which is great and yes i like my own videos every like counts so if you like this video give it a like and it has got 7.2000 dislikes it's quite funny because up until 2000 views it had like 200 likes and one dislike at that point i was thinking like doesn't this guy have like a huge fan base of 4 million plus people following him why haven't they you know disliked my video and then it started youtube started recommending my reaction video whenever someone searched for fituber and people who search for fituber are people who follow his work and as expected these people were and are still pissed at my reaction to his video but i don't blame his followers the first thing is that i could have been a bit more refined and diplomatic in my approach to that video i'm still new to making reaction videos and even youtube videos and i still have to learn the you know nuances of it and the propriety of doing it but i was honestly really pissed at this guy giving out so much misinformation and you could see that on my face in the video and the second thing is i appreciate that his fans and his followers basically are people who are trying to you know learn how to live healthier lives i appreciate that i only wish that they got this health information from someone who's not giving them misinformation someone who doesn't push sponsored healthy products in all of his videos and someone who doesn't recommend eating bamboo for height gain because apparently bamboo is going to help because its natural propensity is to grow tall yeah he actually said that and by that logic let's just hope someone who's really desperate to gain height doesn't eat giraffe meat enough of that i'll read some of the comments you'll see a pattern of thinking associated with all these comments not many of them discuss the points that i brought up in the video they're mostly just you know hating doctors or uh, modern medicine in general and how fituber is the promise savior sent by god and how ayurveda can treat every disease whereas modern medicine apparently can't well let's read the comments first one by arshad not a fituber fan boy over confident doctor here Yeah fair enough I probably deserved that for being a bit cocky in the video I'm sorry Fituber has changed me in the past 2 years he inspired me to stop following someone blindly I hope this person sees the irony in that Veg chef next door hi I would be more convinced if some ayurveda doctor would have done the review because there is a huge difference between the way ayurveda and mbbs treat the patients Yeah fair enough that's a good thing but when an ayurveda doctor actually wrote a comment saying that what i said was right uh, you can find it here somewhere it's buried somewhere because it doesn't have enough likes uh, so i had pinned it for some time and when you know people read that they were arguing with the ayurveda doctor how she is wrong and apparently the fituber guy is right also i'll put a link down in the description where an ayurveda doctor has proved what fituber says is wrong and dangerous so if you want an ayurveda based explanation please check that out omkar patel says he in most videos himself says that check by yourself check ingredients by yourself do your research So I think he actually has audience which doesn't follow him blindly. I think he himself carries a lot of responsibility before putting a video. Yeah, a sensible comment, but check by yourself and check ingredients by yourself. It's good when you're buying biscuits, right? But when you're buying medicines like Ayurveda medicines or uh, modern medical medicines whatever, check ingredients by yourself is not going to make any sense. People are not going to understand what the ingredients are. And do your research is like the most dumb thing that i've heard being said on the internet what what are people going to do unless people actually sit in a lab and do actual tests on biological specimens or collect data from like thousands of patients or even hundreds of patients to see if the product works or not that is research this kind of research is just 
people going on the internet and finding info related to what this guy said and i'm pretty sure the other info found on the internet is much more worse than what fituber says kiran sharma says sorry but the best doctors also cannot understand the power of ayurveda <laughs> well that's probably why they are the best doctors i don't buy that logic oh yeah this is another funny one ranajoy sarkar says this doctor business is being hampered go fituber like <laughs> No bro I'll explain this later actually those were the comments with the highest number of likes so they are at the top let's just read the recent comments to see get a flavor of how things are so jaimin chaudhary asks what is normal for this doctor anything that is normal is normal kaushal velal says sir aap pehle ayurveda pad fir bole charak samhita padhiye why should i read charak samhita i'll explain about it if i was a doctor 2000 years ago i would definitely have charak samhita with me all the time i would read it all the time but now i wouldn't read it because it's outdated science i'll explain that later fftm wiki underscore youtube says yes i can understand the drug mafia will always hate those who want to be healthy by the easiest means present long time ago this guy means to say that i am you know funded by some corporate companies or the drug mafia to you know put some this thing on of uh, youtuber's name like <laughs> what bullshit susan p asks any remedies for vertigo i can't give this thing on internet it's you, you know actually you're not supposed to give diagnosis and uh, medical advice like take this tablet this much for this on the internet it's actually illegal this guy fituber even being not a doctor he is doing that so is actually a criminal offense i think vibhav sahu says this person got 75000 views just because of fituber and 2000 plus comments too <laughs> yeah whatever sakaram says doctor please treat patients naturally not giving them tablet all times and fituber is changing my life fire with is so powerful than tablet if it works well for you good i i don't have any problems with jivita n says dude firstly why did you wanted to prove him wrong get a life bro people are not do stupid to know who's wrong and right wrong and right so please don't even think of messing with fituber fans i don't know how to do the sunglasses smiley emoji rahul raj says corporate behavior they are trying saving their corporate hospitals from ayurveda natural practices again why this is wrong i'll explain later vinay mahore says i think you mistakenly becomes a doctor nobody mistakenly becomes a doctor i literally studied five and a half years took hundreds of exams lot of blood and sweat and finally got here i didn't read any ayurvedic texts on the camera navneet kaur says you are more dangerous because fituber is giving reasons and logics but you are just picking up a few words and giving judgment but not explaining why literally my whole video was explaining what the term is and why it happens mab says doctor is scared you can tell of illness from the tongue most doctors don't know shit. yeah i wasted past 7 years of my life training and studying medicine to not know shit. hello humans wow nice name don't be over confident you're just giving shit. reactions with the books which you studied from a book which is written by western people don't under- underestimate ayurveda or siddha you are treating for symptoms not for disease but ayurveda and siddha will consider both body and mind as one w- what is this whole sense of people because they are westerners they have to be wrong because something is from india they have to be right now as you might have seen there are some common themes in the whole comment section and um, i wanted to talk separately about these now and not when i was responding to the comments because if i respond to the comments all of them it'll take a lot of time and it'll just be repetitive so the common themes that i saw in the comment section is first one doctors are hungry for money they don't care for patients i think this is just because of very bad miscommunication between patients and doctors hear me out doctors are seen as money hungry because they seem to order so many unnecessary tests and seem to give so many unnecessary costly medication right in a way i sympathize with the patients here because in a way that's how people are going to feel the way medicine is being practiced right now now don't get me wrong i'm not trying to say that doctors are money hungry and they are trying to rip off people or something like that like yeah obviously there will be some greedy doctors like in every profession medicine may be a noble profession but doesn't mean that all doctors are noble but thankfully i have not come across any doctor yet in my career who is you know someone who is like actively greedy and trying to rip people off purposefully however for some patients it may come across as that the doctor is trying to rip them off and i believe this is because of miscommunication and what do i mean by that now tell me how does a typical consultation with a doctor go you go to a doctor and you tell what's bothering you 
and within seconds he takes out his prescription pad and writes some 10 tests that you have to get done. You question yourself whether these many tests are actually required but you trust the doctor so you go and get the tests done. You come back with the test reports and the doctor takes one look at it and says you have XYZ disease so take these five tablets for five days and if it doesn't reduce come back to me. That sounds familiar right? Did this doctor here actively try to rip off the patient by ordering unnecessary tests and medicines? Most probably not. But did it seem that way? Most probably yes. And that is the problem. The problem with the way medicine is being practiced right now is that it's patriarchal. And I don't mean it in a gender discriminative, um, it is a male dominated field sense of way. By patriarchal, what I mean is that doctors think that they know best for the patients and they tell patients or rather order patients to get these many tests done and to take these many medications. They actually mean well for the patient, but this is not the right way to do it. This creates a huge communication gap, which causes a lot of confusion and miscommunication. Look, this was probably the right way to practice medicine about five decades ago when people were not well educated and people didn't know enough to take serious health decisions for themselves. So in that time, doctors acted in the patient's best interest. They would tell people, you don't know what this is, so don't worry, get this test done and take these medicines, you're going to be fine. So that was probably fine like five decades ago. But now that most patients have at least some basic education, the best way to practice medicine is to tell patients what's wrong with them and give them options and let them decide what is right for them. For example, if a patient named X came to me with anemia, I would tell him, Mr. X, with all the information that you gave me and all the examinations that I did, I think you have anemia. Do you know what that is? If he says he doesn't know, it is my responsibility to tell him, explain it to him, and make him understand what it is. He has a right to know what is wrong with him and what he is being treated for. It doesn't have to be very detailed. You don't have to explain the genetics of it or like the pathophysiology of it. Just explain in common, simple man terms what it is and what you're gonna do for him. So once I've made sure that he's understood what is going on with him, I would tell him. So to get a better idea of what's going on and what might have caused this, I think we should get these tests done. And then I would list all the tests that needs to be done and I would explain to the patient why these specific tests need to be you know, done. This way the patient understands why so many tests are being done and also if he thinks one of the tests is expensive and unnecessary, he can discuss his concerns with me. At the end of the day, if a patient doesn't want to get a test, I can't force him, right? Only he is responsible for his health. As doctors, we don't need to take moral responsibility for others' health. Our job is to counsel and guide people. And once he gets his reports, I would say, okay, so this is what's causing all these problems. So I suggest that you take these medicines. And then I would tell him, this is how all these medicines work. This is all the common side effects. And if it doesn't work in some days, you know, come back to me. Don't you think this is a much better way of practicing medicine where the patient knows what's going on with him and he can take his decisions for himself. When he has the choice of getting tests done and when he understands completely why tests are being done and when he chooses to get the test done himself, I don't think he's going to blame the doctor. Theme number two, doctors are afraid of people like FitTuber who are giving free quote-unquote medical advice. Firstly, can we all agree that medicine is a complex science that can be misunderstood very easily? If it wasn't so complex and difficult to understand, why is medical training 8 to 15, 16 years when other sciences like engineering and physics have their training for 3 to 6 years? And if people think that people like FitTuber, who is a computer engineer by the way, can have medical knowledge, by reading ancient medical texts in front of the camera, it's safe to say that these opinions are based on one, wanting free medical advice and second, a general mistrust or hatred towards doctors, which I already discussed. Some people in the comment section argued that this guy FitTuber knows more than me who's a doctor of medicine who has been studying and training in medicine for the past seven years. It's hard to argue with that logic. But they can choose to follow whoever they want. It is completely their right. But a few things I commend FitTuber for is that he encourages people to, you know, have more homemade food and exercise, which is excellent. Second, he has educated people to read the ingredients and the nutritional values of common everyday items before buying them. These are both excellent things 
but giving some good advice doesn't negate the bad effects of giving some bad advice. But coming back to the main point, um, no, doctors are not afraid of people like Fituber. Anyone who is giving misinformation, anyone who is a snake oil salesman will one day be exposed. Or people may use what this person suggests and realize they are full of nonsense and they'll go back to taking medical advice from actual trained people. And I'm not saying that people should just go to medical doctors. They, they can go to Ayurveda doctors if they like Ayurveda. Just go to someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Someone who doesn't suggest bamboo for height growth just because it has a natural propensity to grow tall. And all of this free medical advice is first not free because these people push sponsored products in every video. They give an affiliate link and earn commissions for all the purchases that people made from that video. In most instances, this is completely fine. This is how a lot of influencers and creators make money on the internet and it's completely fair. But I think when it comes to medicine and health, such practices should be looked down upon. I think health is a very sacred thing that shouldn't be, you know, messed with for greed. Second thing is that this advice given by people like him is actually pretty dangerous. I can literally literally break down every single point what people like him say in their videos and show you how dangerous they are. In fact, my reaction video to his was all about explaining how uh, his views and opinions are causing undue anxiety because normal signs in the tongue are uh, being told as due to some big issues like heart conditions and all and how very serious signs seen in the tongue that can actually lead to death if untreated are said to be normal that can be treated at home with some jeera water or things like that. In fact, he recently made a video about safe Ayurvedic alternatives to allopathic medicines. And keep this word safe in your mind because it will become important later. Now, Fituber frequently publishes data about lab tests done on everyday things showing how they contain some harmful ingredients and all that. That's, that's good work, I support him for that. But someone decided to do the same for Fituber suggested Ayurvedic medicines and the results will um, surprise you. Now these were investigated by Dr. Abby Phillips who is a hepatologist. As a hepatologist or a liver specialist, he day in and day out treats people who have had severe side effects, liver damage caused by herbal medicines and badly prepared Ayurveda medicines. Because all the toxins that you're about to see are metabolized in the liver and these can cause damage to the liver. So let's just take a look at the lab test reports of Ayurvedic medicines, which are supposedly safe as suggested by Fituber. Let's see if they're actually safe. So Dr. Abby Phillips says, on 18, 12, 2020, computer engineer Fituber shared YouTube video titled 10 safe and useful Ayurvedic tablets to replace allopathic pills, in bracket instant relief. The drugs he promoted were from mostly from Baidyanath group. So one company, not sure if it was paid promotion, I bought them. So he ran a test on it. And you can see the batch number and the name of all the, you know, preparations that were tested. I'll link this all in the description if you want to see it later. So let's just read, you know, some of the things seen in this. Vaidyanath Maha Sudarshan Ganbati. I'm sorry, I don't know how to read that properly. Uh, Fituba says it's for fever and headaches. On analysis, it has 1.63 milligram per kg of lead. Mercury, sorry, 5.87 milligram per kg of lead. Thallium, 2.63. It has phenols. It has a hard drug or poison, digitoxin. Digitoxin is, we have like a very controlled and narrow therapeutic range. In that range, it is used as a medicine, it is safe. But if it crosses that range, it can suddenly become poisonous. So this has that uncontrolled. So it can actually be poisonous to people who take it, uh, take a lot of it. It has a narcotic normorphine, which is a painkiller, which is a derivative of morphine, which is a banned drug, obviously, if you know. It has antibiotic streptomycin, so much for Ayurveda, but it contains quote unquote modern medicine medicines. Uh, next one, Vaidyanath Vat Vatkajan Kusharas. Forgive me for, you know, massacring all the names, my guys, sorry. Fitiba says it's for body pain, back pains, muscle stiffness, analysis has 2 milligram per kg of mercury, 58 milligrams of uh, lead, 28 milligrams of arsenic, which are very toxic, thallium 4 milligrams, and testosterone, which is the male hormone, comarin, which is a blood thinner, which if used improperly can cause a lot of bleeding and also has a dehydrocortisone, which is a steroid. And he has also, you know, uploaded the test results on the tweet. I'll put this all in the description below. If you want to check it, you can check it later. So now that we know that not only are these not safe, they're actually pretty dangerous. 
Ironically, these Ayurvedic medications contain a lot of modern medicine compounds. The ones we think are very dangerous and we don't prescribe it just like that to people that are present in these safe Ayurvedic drugs. But with this knowledge arises a conundrum. What if you really like Ayurveda medicine? You may have found that it helps you. So if you want to go for it, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. But meet someone who is qualified and buy your preparations from a place that practices clean Ayurveda. There are places like Kotakalarya Vaidyashala and others who prepare their own medicines. I can't say whether they'll have heavy metals in it or not. A lot of Ayurveda medicines have heavy metals in it. I am not sure why. Again, I don't recommend you use any of this, but if you have to use one of the Ayurveda preparations, get it from places like these. Coming back to the main point, no, doctors are not afraid of people like Fituber. In fact, a greedy doctor would even be happy about Fituber because we get a lot of patients who come to us after having severe side effects from taking these, you know, herbal and Ayurveda medicines. Point number three. Ayurveda is more advanced because it was written by ancient rishis and vaidyas thousands of years ago. I do agree that Ayurvedic texts were written by great physicians of that time. There were physicians like Sushruta who did amazing pioneering work in surgery and plastic surgery and wrote Sushruta Samhita which is a very detailed book on surgery and others like Charaka who wrote Charaka Samhita, a detailed book on medicine. And these people were one of a kind physicians and I can only hope that I become a physician of their caliber. And I'm sure these great physicians researched a lot, gained practical evidence by treating patients and wrote them in their books. And at the time it was published, it was probably the most advanced scientific medical knowledge known to man at that time. Western medicine also had similar beginnings with people like Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, other physicians like Galen, who were roughly the contemporaries of Sushruta and Charaka and were considered great physicians in their countries. And these people also wrote a lot of books, a lot of treatises, how to treat different, uh, you know, health problems and the philosophy of medicine in general, things like that. And for nearly 2000 years, the teachings of people like Hippocrates and Charaka were followed in their countries and they both had very similar theories. The Western medicine had a theory of bad humors, which said an imbalance of these humors is what caused diseases. Now, if you know about Ayurveda, the whole of it is based on a very similar theory. Ayurveda says any disease in the body is caused because of imbalance in one of the four constituents or a dosha in one of these things. Till about 200 years ago, I would say Ayurveda was the more advanced and more scientifically sound form of medicine compared to Western medicine, which had really weird treatments. So how did this sort of retarded Western medical science in just 200, 300 years become this extremely successful, accurate and scientifically strong form of medicine, which can cure conditions ranging from congenital deformities to cancers. It all happened because they started questioning the wisdom of the great physicians. Sure, the ideas published by these great physicians were considered to be the best medical knowledge in their time, which was thousands of years ago. And as time progressed and as we got more information about diseases and we developed more technology to get more information about the diseases, but still there was this sense of never question wise men's ideas. So that was what caused the rot in Western medicine. This continued for two millennia and medicine changed when this thought process changed. Physicians started questioning the ideas and principles set out by these great men. And slowly the concept of evidence-based medicine started to take form. What it means is that any recommendation or any suggestion given by any doctor or any institute, no matter how great, how noble, how amazing they are, should be backed by research and scientific data. And this data has to prove that medicine actually works and this will be retested and re-verified by people all over the world in competing universities, in competing drug companies, basically people trying to disprove this theory when they do that study. And if they also find this to be true, only then it becomes agreed upon and comes down to medical practice. For example, what it means is that imagine I'm like the best in my field. I'm like this surgeon who has achieved wonderful things, have done like miracles, have treated uh, conditions that others thought that could never be treated. Now, if I say for X disease, give this treatment or do this procedure, people are not gonna say, okay, he said it, he is the best. He knows what he is talking about. He is the goat. <laughs> so just follow what he's saying. No, they'll be like, Oh, I know you're great and it's good that you have, you know, probably found a solution to this disease, but 
show us proof that it works. And it is this questioning of authoritative figures and long held beliefs that has led to radical and revolutionary changes in modern medicine. And it is this lack of questioning of authoritative figures and long held beliefs in Ayurveda that is what has led to the stagnation in Ayurveda. Most of their treatment practices are based on these principles laid down by great physicians of their time 2000 years ago and all these doshas that have really no scientific explanation for them. All forms of medicine should be based on data, science and research and not on devotion towards great men of yore. However, in the recent years, I've seen some of the Ayurveda doctors question these beliefs and try to bring in research and data-based science into Ayurveda. This would definitely help a lot of people and might prevent Ayurveda becoming completely obsolete. Another thing a lot of these commenters said is that modern medicine keeps changing its recommendations, so you are not even sure what is right, but Ayurveda is set in stone. It doesn't change its opinions. And to them, I say respectfully, Anything that doesn't update itself with newer evidence is not science, it's a religion. Theme number four. With the advent of modern medicine, people are getting more diseases than before and our ancestors were healthier. This just seems to be a confusion between Western lifestyle and modern medicine. I don't know how this even makes sense. People do all kinds of unhealthy things that doctors ask them not to do. People lead sedentary lifestyles, they'll jump on their bike or scooters just to go to the corner store. People drink 5-6 cups of coffee and tea a day filled with refined sugar. Watch TV for hours sitting with a 1kg pack of popcorn with a pack of cigarettes and a 6 pack of beer. And when they fall sick, it's somehow because of doctors. Why are more and more people getting lifestyle diseases like diabetes, hypertension and heart disease nowadays? Is it because their doctor gave them a medicine to cause this? No. As the name says, these diseases are caused because of the lifestyle. And people will literally blame everyone else but themselves for their condition. And by the way, the advent of modern medicine has raised the average life expectancy from 31 years in 1947 to almost 70 years now. So maybe, just maybe, modern medicine is allowing all of us to live way longer than our ancestors did. Theme number five, modern medicine drugs are harmful because they are chemicals and Ayurveda is safe because it's natural. The image that people have when they think of a modern medicine drug is that it is made by this crazy scientist sitting in a lab somewhere mixing all these funky colored uh, liquids from 20 different test tubes. Sure, there are a lot of compounds that are chemically synthesized, but there are also a lot of drugs which are derived from natural sources. Most of the antibiotics are derived from natural sources like fungi and bacteria, which are present on trees, which are present in sand, which are present in coral reefs, flowers and seeds. A lot of cancer drugs are extracted from plants and many other drugs used in medicine every day are extracted from natural sources. A few examples. You know aspirin, right? Aspirin was first extracted from the bark of the willow tree. Metformin, which is the most common uh, diabetic medication, is extracted from the French lilac. Pain medications like morphine are taken from opium plant. Anti-malarial medicine are taken from cinchona tree. And there are a lot of examples, hundreds of such examples in medicine. Modern medical drugs are not just chemically synthesized drugs. We extract any medically beneficial things from any source and a lot of these are from natural sources. We purify them, we concentrate them and we put them in a tablet or an injection and we give it to a lot of people and see if it's safe. Only if the benefits significantly outweigh the risks, then it gets approved for uh, regular medical use. And coming to the it must be safe because it's natural argument, this nice cute looking flower is Datura. It's natural, but if someone eats it, they probably will die. This cute looking frog is natural, but its toxin is one of the most toxic substances in the world. If that toxin gets into any person's blood, they will die. My point is, just because something is natural doesn't make it safe. And as a corollary, just because something is not natural, doesn't make it not safe. So that was it today. I hope you liked the video. I'll see you again next week. Till I see you again, stay happy, stay healthy, take care.